This is CBS 2 News at 11. Tonight, a reaction we can all relate to. Complete shock as an earthquake rocks the tri-state area. Zoom in tight here. We are picking up some little aftershocks. Now, the concern for more, from the shaking at the Statue of Liberty to the damage in people's homes and water shooting out of a street. What's next and what to do if you feel more trembling tonight? And good evening, everyone. I'm Maurice Dubois. Today's 4.8 magnitude quake making history in our area, the strongest in the state of New Jersey since 1783. The epicenter, 45 miles west of Manhattan in White House Station in Reddington, New Jersey. People feeling the shaking up and down the East Coast from Washington to Maine. And tonight, there are no reports of injuries. More than 42 million people did likely feel the rumbling. And we are still on alert tonight for aftershocks. Shocks. We have team coverage for you tonight. Lonnie Quinn breaks down the seismic activity. Dick Brennan with more on what to do if another quake strikes. But we begin with Christine Sloan and the latest aftershock to hit our area. Christine, what a day and night. Certainly has been, Maurice. There have been several aftershocks, including a 3.8 magnitude aftershock here in Gladstone, where we're standing about 20 minutes away from the epicenter of the tremor. The 4.8 magnitude earthquake rattling residents in an area where earthquakes are rare. It sounded like 10 freight trains going at the same time. And I heard it felt like the house jumped. And then I thought, what was that? And then it started to shake. The quake knocking objects off of walls. Terrifying dogs and these horses in Tewksbury, New Jersey. In Reddington, the epicenter of the earthquake, and Owen tried to calm her own horses. It was. It was very scary. It sounded like something a bomb had gone off. And uh, um, my horses were outside in the field running around like crazy. In Reddington, a tree came crashing down after the jolt, and the upper portion of the historic grist mill, built in 1760, collapsed. Crews also responded to dozens of gas leaks. And just after 6 o'clock, an aftershock. Seismologists say expect more in the next week, especially near the epicenter. While aftershocks are a concern for this first 24, 36, 72 hour period out to about a week, um, the entire East Coast is a seismically active area, but most of the earthquakes are relatively small. New Jersey's Department of Community Affairs also telling residents to check their structures to make sure they have no cracks. We're live in Gladstone, New Jersey. Christine Sloan, CBS 2 News. Okay, Christine, thank you. Our coverage continues now with Lonnie Quinn. And Lonnie, you have seen a number of aftershocks yep. on the seismic monitor tonight. And this is the best bit of data I can share with you because this, this is about as accurate as you're going to be with what's going on and what has been going on. So you can see all these little dots on your screen. The bigger the dot, the bigger the seismic activity. Th this, the, the large circles that you see, those are 4.0 or larger. Then you get into the mid size, the small little dots are like 0.9s, 1.7s. The color is also important. You right now don't see any flash of red on the screen, so nothing has taken place over the past hour. Over the past 12 hours, all right, so it's 11 o'clock, go back to 11 a.m., that's the yellow. All sorts of them all over the place. Now, this cluster of green, this is your initial 4.8. And then here you see an equal size dot, if you will. That's the 4.0, the 3.8, the 4.0 aftershock that we had at 6 p.m. Like I said, currently, we don't see anything out there over the last hour. You just heard from that professor saying, hey, 24, 72 hours, you're saying as much as a week out, you keep your eye on what's going on. 4.8 is what we had for an official this afternoon. 5.3 the record, so it was not a record, but that was established, Mo, shortly after the country gained its independence. Uh, this is something that we don't often see around this area. They were relatively shallow. They were only down about, say, five to nine kilometers. You get 70 kilometers or below. Those are the big bad boys, but this was something for us, Mo. We do not get stuff like this around our area.
We just don't see it. That's the truth, Lonnie. Lifelong residents, we know what we're yeah. talking about here. Well, happening now, portions of a New Jersey town are under a boil water advisory because of the quake. Authorities in the Morris County town of Randolph issuing the advisory following a large water main break. Look like a geyser. Happened on Pleasant Hill Road shortly after the quake hit. Residents say it looked like an explosion, sounded like it, sending water into the street for about an hour. Felt rumbling. I almost felt like like the house kind of came up out of the ground. And I had looked out the front and I saw just brown water rushing down like a river. And when I looked over, I saw just, it was like a fountain, like a geyser, just water spewing up. The town says the advisory will remain in effect until repairs are completed and testing shows that the water is actually safe. For a full list of the streets affected by the advisory, go to our website, cbsnewyork.com. In Newark, relief tonight for some families who had been forced to evacuate because of damage from the quake. CBS 2's Lori Bordenaro spoke with shaken residents. One of the three buildings still has no power, but residents of the other two buildings will be back sleeping in their own beds tonight. And we are happy because we can go inside of the house. <laughs> Karina Cruz feeling relieved to be home after a long day. She was jolted out of bed Friday morning by an unexpected earthquake then forced to leave when the home next door appeared to shift, damaging the roofs of buildings on both sides. Many uh, different people coming and say that we're supposed to go outside because it was not safe, the house. Paul Carey forced to leave with his two cats. I heard this rumbling a little bit, but I figured it was on the outside. I figured something happened on the outside. Building inspectors deemed the three multifamily homes on 7th Avenue in Newark unsafe, marking them with red stickers. Late Friday, those stickers were gone and several of the 10 families had returned home. Those in this neighborhood still shaken. And then you hear like noise, like Thankfully, no injuries here, but Karina Cruz still weary about going to bed. You're hoping for a good night's sleep. Yeah, yeah, I hope, yes, because today was a long day. <laughs> a long day indeed and a long night for this one landlord here who's been waiting for hours for the power to come back on. In Newark, Lori Bordenero, CBS2 News. Now, even though the quake happened in New Jersey, you could feel it in the city for sure. Video from Earth Camp captured the moment. You can see the camera shaking as you look at the skyline. CBS 2's Dick Brennan live on the Upper West Side tonight with a look at how New Yorkers reacted to the rumbling today. Dick. Well, you know, Maurice, you said it was a New Yorker earthquake, New York, and you're like, what, huh? I mean, I thought it was a truck rumbling down my block, but others are more savvy, and now we all know that we have something to be nervous about. Did you feel the earthquake this morning? I thought it was my elevator repair guy, <laughs> but my roommate felt it. I ran out of my apartment pretty much immediately. When Natalie Johnson felt the earth move under her feet, she didn't waste a second. Oh my gosh, I live a couple blocks um, away from here and I actually thought my entire building was falling down. The city has 1.1 million buildings and some people on West 82nd Street got a case of the jitters when they say the quake expanded existing cracks in their structure. The buildings department came and gave them the all clear. Pretty scary, really, because if you think about how old some of these buildings are and perhaps how unstable they could be, um, it's a little concerning. According to an OEM report, the first seismic provisions in New York City's building code took effect in 1996 and since then were made more stringent. But the structures most at risk? Older, unenforced brick buildings. You want to uh, make a note of any new um, cracks that you may have noticed, um, you know, on the floor, ceilings, walls. A late day aftershock had people wondering what's next and what to do if it happens again. Well, if you're driving, pull over. If you're outside, stay in open areas. And if you're in a building, don't rush the exits. The greatest danger is directly outside buildings. Instead, drop to the floor, cover your head and neck, and take cover under a solid uh, piece of furniture. And when you feel free and clear, you can drop $10 on a souvenir, like an I Survived the NYC Earthquake t-shirt. This business on Broadway proving New Yorkers know how to make a fast buck. Why'd you want to get a shirt? Because of the novelty. Everyone has one now. <laughs> Gotta have one. Yeah. Did you guys have these in the basement ready to go or something? <laughs> no, we felt the earthquake. It just came to us. We thought it'd be a funny idea. So we went down, made it, put it in the window, and we sold uh, six in 10 minutes. And how many now, do you know? A couple hundred, maybe. Wow. I really have no idea. It's just been absolute nonstop. 
And because people are asking me, yes, they will likely be on sale tomorrow. So run over to Broadway, get your shirt. In the meantime, as for those aftershocks, you heard Lonnie was talking about them. They could last you another week. Well, city building officials are saying, be careful. Look at your building. You see any suspicious cracks reported at 311. Be vigilant at least for another week. We're live on the Upper West Side. Dick Brennan, CBS 2 News. Okay, Dick, and the T-shirt business maybe for another week, too. We'll see. Thanks so much. And the last time a strong quake hit the East Coast was back in 2011, a 5.8 quake striking near Mineral, Virginia. This one was felt over a wide swath from Georgia to Maine, even southeastern Canada, causing as much as $300 million in damage, including famously to the Washington Monument. And you can head over to CBSNewYork.com to watch our coverage from that day. And the quake made batting practice really interesting for the Yankees ahead of today's home opener. Otis Livingston now we're here with more on that. Yeah, a lot more interesting than the game itself. The only thing rocking and rolling around Yankee Stadium was that earthquake. The Yankee bats were nearly silenced, just six hits on the day. Here's a scene as the Yankees were going through batting practice. You can see the shaking. Glaber Torres pretty much unfazed. I'd call that locked in and focus. Bench coach Luis Rojas said he was at second base, thought he was going crazy at first, but he definitely felt something. Aaron Judge was asked if he felt it. Yeah, I felt that felt that pregame. You know, usually you feel a couple of rumbles in this in this stadium pregame, but that one that one was a little different. Where were you? Uh, I don't want to say. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's definitely a no comment. <laughs> You can guess where he was. I mean, uh, a lot of things around the baseball field. Yeah. yeah. Under the stadium. Yeah. All right. Coming up later in sports, I do have to do it. I have to give the highlights or lowlights from the game itself. Maurice. All right. We'll use our imagination. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. And you can watch all of today's coverage and learn even more about the science behind earthquakes at CBSNewYork.com. Do check it out.